Throughout history, there have been many methods and devices invented for torture, which was either a means to extract confessions for information or simply as a form of punishment. The rack has an interesting history and a very long period of use. What is the rack? When was it first used? Was it considered effective? Hello, I'm Colin Heaton, military veteran, historian, author, and welcome to this episode of Forgotten History. The rack is often depicted as a medieval torture device where a subject's hands and wrists are bound and their feet bound at the ankles. There were many different styles and variations of the rack, from a wooden or iron structure designed like a bed upon which the victim would be placed down on their back or front. Ropes or chains connected to the extremities by large cranks, wheels with handles which were turned, taking the slack out of the ropes or chains tightening until the victim's arms and legs were eventually pulled from their sockets. The rack seldom ended in the death of the subject, as most victims gave whatever information they thought would stop the pain rather quickly. It was later considered that any form of physical torture did not always elicit a truthful confession, as people would admit to anything to halt the process. It is believed that the Greeks may have first used the rack as a means of torture. The process was also believed to be used on slaves, citizens, and anyone else without prejudice. One recorded example was when a version of the rack was used to gain the confession from an arsonist named Herostratus, who was accused of burning down the Temple of Artemis at Ephesus in 356 BC. He was then later executed. Alexander the Great had the conspirators who plotted to assassinate him, including his historian Callistinus, tortured on the rack in 328 BC. The Romans also had their version of the rack. The Roman historian Tacitus recorded that the rack was used without success against a freed woman named Epicarus. She was believed to know the names of those who plotted the assassination of Emperor Nero in 65 AD. As stated by Tacitus, the next day, after refusing to talk, she was dragged back to the rack on a chair. All of her limbs were dislocated so she could not stand but strangled herself on a loop of cord on the back of the chair on the way. The rack was a regular feature during the Roman Empire period, and early Christian church fathers, Tertullian and St. Jerome, recorded its use on Christians such as St. Vincent in 304 AD. In the post-Roman period, the rack did not go away. The device was resurrected in Europe and had a long history of use, and many notable persons fell victim such as Guy Fawkes, before he was drawn and quartered. It was first recorded as being used in England, starting with John Holland, the second Duke of Exeter. Holland was the constable of the London Tower in 1447, and the rack became widely known as the Duke of Exeter's daughter. The rack was used to persecute both Catholics and Protestants at various times for a variety of crimes such as heresy, murder, theft, and, of course, treason. The rack was used in every European country to some degree. Even the Muslims used it through their various empires and caliphates. It was still used in Russia up until the 18th century, and this was a strapado-style device where the person was hung vertically by the wrist with weights or pulleys to stretch the limbs by the ankles using gravity. Oftentimes, branding irons or other tortures were also applied. The rack satisfied many requirements, especially the rule during the Inquisition and under orders from the Catholic Church that no blood could be spilled. The rack and other forms of torture that allowed for pain to be administered without blood being drawn were very popular, although not all torturers were so concerned about the blood issue. The rack was reportedly used up until the 19th century in the Ottoman Empire, and even used in China into the 20th century under Mao Zedong. Throughout history, 
Its effectiveness cannot be underestimated. Thanks for watching today's episode of Forgotten History. If you like this episode, please consider becoming a channel member or joining our Patreon page. This would help us offset the ever-increasing cost of production. As always, please like, share, and comment. And if you have any show ideas, please contact us, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Until next time.